wait for that truck to pass by. Any second now. You can do it. Okay. Lesson one, lines, ellipses, and boxes. Ellipses. And we're not watching these videos because you can do that on your own. That would be ridiculous. <clears throat> what is an ellipse? So what is an ellipse? Is it just a fancy word for an oval? Ellipses are extremely important and notoriously annoying to draw. You'll find them all over the place in mechanical drawings. Cars, spaceships, tanks, machines, trains. Anything man-made will probably make extensive use of ellipses. They're so prevalent because they allow us to, with relative accuracy, represent a circle as it sits in 3D space. If you take any circular object, a coin for instance, and turn it this way and that, you'll notice that the 2D shape of your eyes actually, your eyes actually see, isn't always going to be a circle. It will, however, generally be ellipsoid. Is my stream not updating? Hold on, I'm gonna refresh that real quick. Yeah, it was just my stupid um, uh, creator channel, whatever. Okay, anyways. The anatomy of an ellipse. An ellipse has several specific properties. Its scale, the overall size of the ellipse, its orientation, the angle at which it is positioned, its degree, effectively the width of the narrower dimension of the ellipse. You'll also see here that there are two axes, the major axis, which defines the widest span of the ellipse, and the minor axis, which defines the narrowest span of the ellipse, which is also its degree. There's a picture. Take it in. These two axes run perpendicular to one another. The major axis does not and will never matter. The minor axis is extremely important, however. That can be a little difficult to grasp at first due to their infuriatingly unintuitive naming scheme. So we don't care about majors, we care about minors. Oh look, a picture. Oh, some ellipses. Okay. More reading. The degree. This is going to become quite important as we get into the next lesson, but I think it's important to introduce this concept now. If you take a circular coin or some other similar object like a CD, who even owns those, and hold it up so it faces so its face points towards you, you're going to see a circle. It's still an ellipse. A circle is an ellipse after all, but the gr degree of this ellipse, literally measured in degrees, is going to be 90 degrees. That is the angle between your vision, like an arrow coming straight out of your face, and the surface of the circle. As this disc or coin turns, however, the degree of the ellipse gets smaller, and therefore the ellipse gets narrower and narrower, until finally you're looking at the edge of the object, or an ellipse with a degree of zero. As shown with the image above, from the far left is 90 degrees, and the far right is zero degrees, so that's what this is. Hooray. Okay. The minor axis. Now, while the major axis is largely relevant, the minor axis is critical when we start thinking about 3D space. The reason it's so important is that while the minor axis represents something in 2D space, the narrowest span across the ellipse, it also represents something important in 3D space as well. In 3D, the minor axis represents a line, or in math terms, a vector, that points straight off the surface of the circle. It runs perfectly perpendicular to that surface. This is incredibly useful when drawing cylinders and other ellipse-based 3D forms. In a cylinder, you can imagine that there is a straight spine that connects the circles on either end. This spine is the minor axis, which runs perpendicular to both circles and helps us to align them correctly. If their minor axes don't match up, then you'd end up with a tube with one end sheared off at an angle rather than straight across. And then he 
here's this picture here illustrating such oh look that was relatively short it's a miracle merry birthday everybody Every Drawbox lesson consists of lecture content and exercises that are assigned as homework. It's best to complete this homework before moving on to the next section, as this lesson consists of three sections, lines, ellipses, boxes. It is best that you only submit your work for review when you've completed all three. So this is the second set of homework for lesson one that I've done. The homework assignments for this section is as follows. Table of ellipses, ellipses in plane, it's, it's not so. Two pages of the table of ellipses exercise, two pages of the ellipses in planes exercise, and one page of the funnels exercise. And then, yeah, um, the normal stuff. So we're gonna go through as much of this as I feel like, and then That'll be that, but I'm not, I wouldn't, I don't expect to finish all of this, so this might get split up again. Let's go over here, and more reading. We were lied to. Okay, so let's read this. The first exercise is relatively straightforward and involves drawing a lot of ellipses. There are not, however, simply free ellipses with no real goals. Instead, it is pinned on the idea of setting out criteria and targets for the ellipses we intend to draw before drawing them. Therefore, when you draw your ellipse, it is either correct or it isn't. So start off by taking your piece of paper and dividing it into a table with two columns and a bunch of rows. Each of these sections will contain a different variation on the exercise. Here you can experiment with different approaches, but here's a few that you can try out first. So for this one, you draw a circle starting from the far left of the box, then draw another beside it. Keep repeating it until you fill in the whole box. Strive to make your circles touch the top and bottom of the box as well as the line to the left of it. Uh, next, same idea but with ellipses. Within this section, you should aim to draw ellipses of the same degree. You can also play with the angle of the ellipse, but this should be also be consistent within the same section. And then this one's a little different. Draw a wave through the section, dividing it into irregular pockets of space. Then fill these spaces with circles or ellipses, trying to keep them touching the bounds of the section as well as the curve. Everything should fit in there snugly and nothing should be floating around. Um, Uh, this exercise is meant to get you used to drawing ellipses in a variety of sizes, orientations, and degrees. It also sets out a clear space each ellipse is meant to occupy, giving us a means to assess whether or not an ellipse was successful or if there were visible mistakes where it went side of its allotted space or ended up falling short. Practicing against set criteria with a way to judge success or failure is an important element of learning. There's nothing wrong with failure, it's an opportunity to learn. Having a clearly defined task allows us to analyze these failures and make the most of them. And look, he even pretended he was bad at drawing ellipses just for us. <laughs> um, mistake, drawing without a concrete goal. I've seen lots of people do these in the past, that is. Drawing ellipses floating inside of other ellipses. This is my opinion of course but I don't think they're terribly useful since they don't give a concrete target to aim for. I understand that it definitely is tricky to draw a circle inside of another circle and keeping it centered but I still don't feel like it's effective as other more concrete exercises. Uh, another mistake, not drawing through ellipses. This is something I'm pretty adamant about. You should be drawing through every single ellipse you draw for my lessons. That is, drawing around the ellipse two or three times before lifting your pen. This is ideal in my opinion, but three is, or two is ideal in my opinion, but three is also acceptable. 
When you try to hit your ellipse in a single round, it's usually going to come out uneven and wobbly due to drawing too slowly and carefully, or extremely loose due to simply not having built up the muscle memory to nail an ellipse. Drawing through your ellipse gives your arm the chance to familiarize itself with what's being asked of it in that first pass and then firm it up in the second. And you can look at that picture to see what you're doing wrong. I did like a whole page of only drawing through it once and I got yelled at, so don't do that. Along with giving you an extra chance to build up the muscle memory, it also helps you maintain the confidence needed to achieve a smooth, even shape without totally losing control. As you get better, your ellipses will tighten up, the gaps between your successive passes will shrink, and eventually your ellipses will appear much cleaner. At this point, you'll probably be able to nail your ellipses in one pass, but I still want you to continue drawing through them for all of the Drawbox lessons. Outside of Drawbox, you're free to do what you like. And your end result will look something like this, which is very large. Uh, let me zoom out a little bit. Oh, Jesus. Hold on. Oh, is it this one? Okay, it's this one. So we got that. And we do two pages of this? Yeah, two of these. Okay. So that's all the reading for the ellipses. Okay. So we're gonna need a ruler. And gonna make big old tableau. brush off the weird crumbs and we're gonna make some areas so this is probably about the middle or a middle that was not the middle Now we have a table, and I'm just going to go ahead and put the date on it. And so the first one we're going to do is we're going to 
try and make circles. Circles, circles, circles. Oh, these are going to be big. I wonder if I should have made these boxes smaller. Oh, well, I can do that on the next one. Okay. Well, that was something. And then the next one is supposed to be ellipses. I think I made these, these are big. At least I feel like they're big. I don't know. a little better. arm really wants to use my elbow so that's super fun pretty much every time I start it's like elbow first and then I have to go back and lock it again and that's no it's a little tiring I think it's because it's a circular motion as opposed to making just lines like the other day the same width at all. I'm just gonna fill in the gap, I guess. Seems like the correct thing. I'm not sure. Okay. Just 
gonna do these a couple more times, kind of like the picture. But it looks like, I guess. Well, let's try making some straight ones. No one's yelling at me yet. A lot slower today than it was the last few times I've done this. It might be because I'm trying to process those videos on YouTube. I don't know. I don't actually know how any of that works. Yeah, there's like 10 seconds of delay. I don't think it's necessarily a big deal, but I don't know. We'll probably find out tomorrow. Because hopefully I won't have to upload something while I'm doing this tomorrow, but we'll see. We'll just keep drawing some stinking ellipses. flying away paper. A super narrow one. That was bad. That was a bad choice. Alright, um, just kind of doing what's in the picture. So now we're gonna just keep trying to do some angles, I guess. Is that what we're supposed to do? Let me double check. So for this one, got a circle. Yeah, I guess so. So we'll just play with some angles. It's really hard to sort of ignore everything that's next to it and work around that. to finish do these ellipses and then I gotta go make a bunch of phone calls oh Ariel your eyes are 
you can come to the hospital and get it fixed. Ah. That one was pretty good. You take my... I don't need that. I just put that over there. Okay. Oh, um, yeah, I've, I've got eye problems. They're apparently genetic. My uh, retinas don't like to always stay attached the way they should. So when I went to the optometrist, uh, what was that, yesterday? They said that I might have to get surgery again, but we don't know yet. It doesn't look urgent, but having to figure out insurance and stuff is kind of a pain in the butt. So, the, hold on, let me start on this real quick. Okay, we're gonna make, we're gonna do the swirly line stuff. Let me make some weird lines for that and then I'll tell the epic saga of my eyeballs. Um, when I was in high school, I went in for a routine eye exam and they noticed something a little weird. Um, they asked me about stuff like, have you seen any floaters or flashes of light or anything like that? And I was kind of like, well, I have floaters. And, you know, they seem pretty large, but they don't get in the way. And Anyways, they sent me to another eye doctor, a more specialized one. And they noticed that I have some thinning and tearing in my retinas. Um, in, in my right eye, I actually had a rather large looking tear and so they decided that I should if I experienced any of those symptoms that I described before I should come back in because they might have to do surgery and lo and behold a few months later I actually started seeing flashes of light and when I went in they did the surgery and the doctor told me that oh yeah your retina was actually starting to detach a little bit so if you had waited too much longer, you might have gone blind in that eye. Which was fun to find out, not really. And laser eye surgery hurts. At least that particular one that I had done. And they basically told me afterwards that I am always going to have this problem uh, because there were other areas in my eye that had symptoms of the thinning and tearing and so I can't do anything like contact sports so there goes my career in kickboxing and that uh, you know it's just always be on the lookout if you see a lot of floaters new ones or if you see flashes of light you need to come in and I try to get my eyes checked at least once or twice a year but I hadn't gotten them checked over the last year because I was in a crazy position. So I actually had four rows of stitches done on the tear in my eye. And it's it's still there. It doesn't really go away apparently. Uh, but when I went in they noticed there's another area that they m that might be a problem. So now I have to get that looked at. But they didn't say that it looked urgent, so I'm not super worried. If I have to get the surgery again, I've done it before. I know what it's like. It's not a huge deal. Um, 
But it is a little frustrating because now I have this, you know, limitation. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I can't like get hit, knocked upside the head. <laughs> they said, don't let your brothers and sisters knock you upside the head anymore. <laughs> uh, and things like that. It doesn't really stress me out too much because I've known for a number of years that this was something that was probably going to pop up again. It's a more, I worry about how scary it is for other people to hear about it. Like. Eventually, I'm gonna have to call my parents and be like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I gotta get. I, I probably have to get eye surgery again. Thought you should know. Okay, thanks. Bye. You know, thanks for all the genetics." <laughs> and I have it in both eyes, actually. The um, wear, so I could potentially, in the future, need surgery on my left eye too. But the thing that makes that more complicated is that uh, one, one of the symptoms is seeing flashes of light. I see flashes of light when I'm really tired. <laughs> so whenever I get really tired and I see a flash of light, I think, oh no, am I going blind? And then I have to like put it all into context as like, no, it's three in the morning, you haven't slept, you have to go to bed. If you see these lights, well, you know, when you're out and about in your normal day, then it's probably something wrong. You're, you're probably just having a mild, you know, sleep deprived hallucination. Cause when I'm very tired, I also hear music that isn't there, but that's just a sleepy air, a sleepy thing. It, I don't have any other problems like that. But the good news is, is I'm getting new glasses. The better news is, is if you watch this video later, you can just mute the part where I'm talking about my eyeball problems and just watch me make lines. <laughs> they are pretty nice. They're, they're different from my old ones. I'm hoping that being so far up north means I can have plastic frames again because all the way down in Florida when I had plastic frames they would warp from the heat of the sun if I left them out in a windowsill or in a car. You should really get your eyes checked because you kind of need them. I have a lot of like small health problems that when piled on together create one big broken human being. I'm really regretting this wavy line now. It's That's going to be challenging. I mean... Getting your eyes checked takes, what, an hour once a year? And it could potentially save you from going blind. I mean, I was lucky that um, my mom had decent health insurance, or eye vision insurance, and I'm pretty sure it covered most of my surgery. But um, my parents weren't always the best at making sure I made it to appointments that I was supposed to have. So I was fortunate to have actually had an eye exam that year. Otherwise I might have gone blind in one eye. And then I'd be wearing an eye patch. Just take your children out to the woods, you know, like... Hansel and Gretel style and give them some honey buns to find their way back home and by the time they do You should be done now You only have the one kid right there's like a dog involved and that basically counts as another child Ooh, That one actually came out really good
So what I seem to be having a problem with, at least with all these tiny ones, is that I tend to go too low. Oh, so you basically have like four children. Oh my gosh, I burped right in the middle of that ellipse. <clears throat> um, yes, I was doing art before Drawbox, and it's a horrible and embarrassing story that takes a minute to tell. <laughs> if you look at my Instagram, there's stuff I've done outside of Drawbox. Um, I used to be really big in some fandom circles, so that, it, that happened. Um, right now, my streams are mostly Drawbox things because I'm working my way through the whole course. <laughs> Shut up, Sven. Before I, um, well, I'm working through it. I think it'll be good for people to see live examples of going through the lessons and a better, healthier way to do it. But I did stream, I think, Friday or Saturday. I was painting a rock, which I actually have right here. So... Last weekend I painted this because taking breaks are important and this is what I do for fun. All my other paintings are um, still in the States. They're going to get mailed up here hopefully this week. But uh, It's a rock! I have an accent. You guys are mean. I do watercolor paintings and I do ink drawings um, and I also write a webcomic and I'm also writing a Dungeons and Dragons module slowly. So and it's going to be free! So I do a lot of things, but uh, this is what I'm currently sort of pushing out into the public. Um, I write mostly jokes. That's what I do most of the time is I write jokes for the Orchid Gnome Mild Adventure comic. I write all the pages and most of the jokes and a ton of little author note type things that are very funny and apparently people read. And we're on webtoons. Someone should drop the link for the webtoons one. I think we're almost at 1400 subscribers, which is really cool. Um, well, I never really wrote anything for Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I've done DMing before, but that was way back in 3.5. And um, so writing out something that's a whole module and isn't just me flying by the seat of my pants. I used my wrist for that. Um, but anyways, so writing something out that is organized and clean and has a clear direction and isn't just me flying by the seat of my pants trying to keep people 
entertained is difficult. There's a package? Is it actually coming to the door? Is there going to be a knock? Okay, well, I'll, I'll talk about it well then. I'll just put this here. Um, but, um, writing something that is long and clean and organized is challenging, but I'm still having fun, which is good. Um, we've managed to, through a various amount of yelling, expand upon the original idea to make something that I think will be very satisfying and entertaining once I finish writing it. The hard part right now is doing all the research for like mob encounters because I don't really know how to do that and I want to kind of do it well to where it scales so that it can be challenging but fun. Oh, that's the door. What's in the box? Oh, um, it's about the size of a large rolling pin, <laughs> which you wouldn't understand that. Oh, maybe. Um, If you want to play test it, that's going to be fine. You should just, I don't know, are you already in my Discord server for Ogma? Because I'm going to, when I have it sort of rough drafted, throw it up there and then get some feedback since I'm not familiar with certain parts, which will be good. I'm not too worried about the story aspect because that's... Um, purposely being kept loose and fun it's just making sure the smaller details of like do the maps look make sense even remotely are these mobs appropriately scaled because I think it's like level one to four is what we're shooting for because I want to write something that's light and fun but still has some meat to it because ultimately, it's just advertising for Agma. That's why it's free. And um, we'll see if people like it. Because if, if it's well received, I'll do more. I mean, shit. I'll probably do more anyways, but... That's just a matter of do I push them or not. Bam. These tiny ones are a pain. Alright, I guess that's what that looks like. So let's... So there's six of these left. I think it is Amazon. I'm pretty sure it's from Amazon.
I just went and popped open the box. It says something about multi-viewer. Anyways, let's do some more regular ellipses and some swirly ones. So let's see. I'm going to kind of go off of the reference picture on the page. So let's kind of go like. So let's go like this. And we'll do a swirl. Oh, neat. More Borderlands. Cool, cool, cool. And then the rest of these will just do regular ellipses. Because I think I need a little bit more practice. Yep. And we're going to do two pages of these. So that's fine, too. I think I'm only going to do these two pages today, and I might do the ellipses and planes tomorrow, depending, because um, there's a lot I have to look up later. I'm gonna check the uh, YouTube upload real quick. Uh, okay, the Ghosted Plains is almost done. It says it's got 10 minutes left on it. Yeah, we're. I'm editing these streams down to sort of lesson sized chunks of various lengths and they will go up on YouTube and I'm going to figure out how to upload the entire streams too but they'll be in a separate playlist so it'll be all neat and organized and then I scream at Premiere It's Scylla Stu. It's the same as my username. It's not something that people will generally try and snatch up, luckily. I'm gonna just fill in this gap. Yeah, look at that. That is an ugly URL. That is ugly as hell. What are you talking about? Oh. Oh, okay, yeah.
YouTube's insane. <laughs> oh, okay. Let me check something. Which YouTube milestone means that we have to adopt a pet now for views? And when we hit two million, do we buy a house? <laughs> they just Amazon Prime us a house. No, 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 the emotional apology only comes if you try to branch out and offer a product and then it doesn't um, pan out. <laughs> you know, you accidentally poison some customers or violate Geneva conventions or don't actually make a product. You just send out a bunch of shipping labels. I don't, it only counts if most of your success comes from your YouTube platform. It doesn't count if you're established somewhere else. Everyone knows YouTube is the path to emotional devastation and failure. Um, the one where you're not supposed to club baby seals. Oh, that was a disaster. I 
most of those didn't look too bad. Here at Club Club, we only speak in racial profanities. Oh, Sluggy sent me dick dick. Yes. Actually, those look really good. At least to me. The ones on the right. Obviously not that one on the left that looks like it went through some problems. <laughs> <laughs> you know which one I'm talking about. I think a fun thing for people to do would be to take their exercise homework and maybe put it under a, like a light board or something and then just do the like, line art on top of it where it's all clean and they can see where all their work pays off because isn't that like a thing people do like a ton of under drawings and then you draw over top of it and you do a final drawing Ooh, that one came out really well this might be a nice way to see all your work pay off No, I mean, like, not like that. I meant, like, treat their whole finished thing as the underdrawing and then actually draw on top of it. Like, you take your finished dick pic and then you draw on top of that and you make a clean dick pic and then you show it to your boyfriend. I don't know. Oh, well, in that case, they're idiots. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> if you kick me out, I'm licking all of your belongings before I leave. And taking half of them with me. <laughs> Everyone sends Sven your dick dick pics. on an armistice. You're gonna have to wait, Sven. We're not allowed to break up because if we break up, I'm taking Ogma with me. If we break up, Ogma will be replaced with stick figures and coconuts. <laughs> As in, I'm going to draw stick figures on top of coconuts and publish that.
<laughs> no! I don't want to draw that many potatoes, I'll die. I'm having a hard enough time keeping up with all the jokes that I need to write. Okay, well that's one page. Okay, I finished the first page. Da -da 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 -da. So that looks cool. All right, let's just put that over here. And we're gonna go ahead and start on the next one. Now, now, the only thing I do to toilet paper is fold it all fancy like once in a while to surprise you. I think it's hilarious. A picture of a dick dick with sunglasses on. Ugh. Try and make these a little bit narrower. That's really great. That's a lot of cylinders. Are you ready for the treasure chest challenge? Some sort of truck situation happening outside. I'm pretty sure Sven did. Is there, is there a flare for that? Oh, maybe there should be a flare. It's TGI Fridays up in here. These circles are ugly.
you're not a patron, you might as well be a pigeon. And that company doesn't care about you. And keeps trying to stop me from squishing you. I mean, these pigeons are so fat, I just want to squish them. Trying to find a good pace for this. That one wasn't bad. That's pretty good too. I think I'm getting it. Well, it's a good thing all the lessons are free. <laughs> I got, um, my cuticles are all messed up, so I keep picking at them, and that just makes it worse. Oh, I think I'm getting the hang of it. She says I'm immediately messing it up. I'm not a patron either. I've never given any money to the Drawbox campaign ever was it uh, information's free attention is a commodity How many critiques do you have to do today?
<laughs> to the dogs with you. Bork, bork, sluggy, bork, bork. I didn't ghost that one like an idiot. Okay. <laughs> Is that really a thing? It's just the final form of all game studios is to either be absorbed by Xbox or turn into safety training. I was kind of sad and kind of relieved to hear that Double Fine got bought by Xbox. Uh, why do you want to learn how to draw? Um, because I like telling stories and drawing is one means to an end to do that. Uh, if drawing wasn't really a good way to tell a story, I probably wouldn't be taking it quite so seriously. I... Yeah, I, uh... I've been writing since I was a kid. Uh, poems, short stories, terrible fanfic. Uh... Most of it doesn't exist on the internet anymore because the websites that I had it hosted on are closed. Which is kind of a shame. I wish I'd made copies. But yeah, I just really like telling stories. That's why Ogma exists. I have a whole notebook full of stories that I've got to figure out the best method to tell. I really liked comic books when I was a kid even though I couldn't really afford to buy them. I would just go to the library and read whatever they had. Uh, so I also read a lot of manga because that just became available around the time I was old enough to enjoy that sort of stuff. And so I have a bunch of stories that I want to tell. And I want to do them in the best format possible. Be it a comic, a visual novel, a traditional novel, a video game, whatever. So learning how to draw is just giving me the skills I need to do that. Or at least the skills I need to understand where someone else is coming from if I hire people to do that in the future, which I probably will. I think it's kind of important to know how something is made so that way if someone working for you has a problem, you can understand it a little better and actually be helpful in trying to fix it. And then there are just some stories I want to tell that I want to be very specific about and how it gets done. So I need to know how to draw well so I can just do it myself. What do you currently do? Currently I'm not doing anything until September where I'll be going to art school. I'm right now looking at a, was it Bachelor of Fine Arts? So I'll be going to school full time. Hopefully I can find some sort of work. And um, do that also.
Yeah. I just like telling stories. You can ask Comfy, because I got a ton of them that I want to do. I'm actually, ha ha, sort of outlining a novel that I want to write, which will be fun. Um, and if I can, I might turn it into a series. Don't throw out my pins. I worked really hard on those. <laughs> you guys are funny. I'm 27. Um, yeah. I'm 27. And I have a five year old son, and I'm divorced, and I used to work at a warehouse before I came to Canada. So, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's, there's a lot. <laughs> but yeah, I'm a little past my mid twenties now. Do a little dance. Um, you know, I know what I want, so that's always good. Sluggy has arrived. Sound the horn. I'm not really concerned about my age. It's going to be a little weird going to school and knowing that I'm older than most of my classmates, but I don't think it'll be a really big deal. I just will have a lot of fun stories to tell all those little babies. Oh yeah, you want to see all the pens I've collected so far for the pen test? Yeah! I haven't even gotten into uh, jet pens yet, or I think Blick maybe. So there's going to be a lot more, and I'm going to use them all for the 250 box challenge, like a page with each pen. So that'll be fun. You know, my preview keeps freezing up. But yeah, we're looking at, there's probably gonna be over 20 pens to try. Um, uh, that'll happen when, uh, when will that happen? When, when am I supposed to do this challenge? I don't know, because I've, I've always gotten to the end of the Lesson 1 homework and then had to quit for various reasons, because my life is, you know, very full and complex. <laughs> okay, so right after Lesson 1? Okay, cool. So very soon! Um, I guess I could start on that after you do the homework critique stream. That'll be a very long series. And I think we're going to do like a speed video of that too. <laughs> it's 
So we should probably work on ordering those pens soon because I don't know, I don't think it's going to take too much longer for me to finish. And we have to get it through customs. Yeah, I'm going to have to get some more tape so we can label all the pens as we go because I don't really like this tape. Can we, can we go back and spend $10 on washi tape? <laughs> uh. So I guess um, once I finish lesson one, it's going to be a very long series of streams of me doing boxes and pen reviews. I'll have to get a I'll have to get a rubbish bin for all the pens that I hate. And be very dramatic about it. Like all those pro YouTubers, you know. Slam that. There's just wait, wait hold on. I know I, I know how to do this. It's it's what do the kids say? I go to yeet that sucker into the sun? Am I doing it? Am I relating to the youth? Am I YouTubing? I'm gonna go back to making ellipses now. I'm sorry. Oh, I have an idea. Uh, Drawbox bath water. <laughs> we dip all the pens in the water and then we soak comfy in the water and absorb the essence. Nobody wants that. Why did I say that? I hate topical humor. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm so I'm not even sorry, really. Boomer Zoomer. Oh, you sixteen. Those are some years. I, I don't want to like commit to saying those are the good years or the bad years. They're just some years. You know, it all depends. Oh, so now we play Edge of Seventeen, right? Right, we play that song. Does anybody know that song? I don't want to hum it and accidentally trigger any sort of sensor. <laughs> Let me get demonetized for my terrible humming. I don't know what the I don't know what the labor laws are. Do you plan on getting a job since you're turning sixteen? That's what a lot of people do, right? They get jobs. I got my first job right on the cusp of the end of in-person applications. My dad went to a pizza place and got me a job and called me out of the blue and said, Hey, you have a job now. And that was truly bizarre and the last time that ever happened. No, wait, it wasn't the last time that ever happened. Um, hold on, let me think about that. Was it? My maid job might have had a paper application, but I honestly don't remember. I think it was also a Craigslist ad. So there's that.
but my other jobs have been other jobs I've applied for have all been online but it was a really weird experience it's like I don't didn't think anybody did that anymore but I also lived in a very small town so there's that and that's my pointless tangent of the day my quota is full done and these actually aren't going too badly I feel like they're getting a little better than the first page as far as how far out my overlap goes yeah I th um for my first job at the pizza place, I didn't even actually fill out an application. My dad went there, told them I needed a job. They said, sure, we'll hire her, your daughter as a dishwasher. Just have her come in and fill out the paperwork. Yeah. And they gave me like a week to memorize their um, pizza shorthand. <laughs> and I had to take a test on pizza shorthand. And I think I got like a 93. <laughs> and that place was terrible. To work at but I got a lot of free pizza so that was nice <laughs> uh, the pizza shorthand was just when you answer the phones to take an order uh, you have like at the time they had this very thin strip of paper that you would manually with a pen write in what's going on the pizza and the shorthand was for the toppings like pea for pepperoni or like DP, double pepperoni, M for mushrooms. Yeah. But it was also right there taped to the wall, but it's just when people are taking their, or giving you their orders, they talk so fast and they just, you know, want to get off the phone as quickly as possible. So you really only get one opportunity to double check that you did everything right. Uh, I think nowadays everything's digital, except for some really old, um, you know, um, non-corporate-y, whatever, whatever you call it. I think everything's just digital now. Mm, what do we want to do? What do we want to do? Let's do another one of these. That looks fun. My boss was a real weird guy, and I think he was just stoned 100% of the time. <laughs> yeah, it's something like that. When I moved back in with my parents during a weird period of my life, uh, they wanted me to find a job, and they were still under the impression that you have to go and pound a pavement, you know, to find work. And if you're not out there for three hours asking people for a job, you know, when you're Sunday best, then you're not really trying. It is warm in Halifax right now. I have a fan pointed at me and it's really not quite enough. Um, but anyway, so after I, you know, failed to find a job for all the reasons, um, 
they just blamed it on the fact that all I did was sit in front of the computer and I didn't make any, you know, cold calls or anything. And I had to literally point out to my mother a line in the application that said, if you call or email us directly about this job position, you will be disqualified. And even that wasn't really quite enough of an aha moment for them. So, but later on, when my stepfather wanted to try and find a new job because he was unsatisfied with where he was, and he had to physically do this application process himself and like realize all the ways that it has changed, he gave up. <laughs> he gave up and stayed at his job until he was able to retire because it was terrible. And then, and then they finally understood. And he's retired now, but picked up a part-time job at Sam's Club for funsies. But even that was, you know, something of a trial for him. And now he works in the produce department, arranging melons. I don't know how my how my dad handled that. You know, I want to do another one of these things, but I wanted to go like this way. No, I'm going to go. I have to do it this way. What am I what am I doing? Ignore me. <laughs> Everyone on Patreon selling titties. But if people are buying titties, I don't mean you can't blame them. I just wish my titties didn't have to meet such high expectations. It's just getting ridiculous now. <laughs> My son lives in with his father. He doesn't live with me. I'm divorced. So you don't have to worry about him running in and knocking things over while I'm doing these streams. <laughs> it's, no, it's not a problem. Everything's good. Don't worry. I talk to him once a week when I can manage. And I get along all right with his father. Life happens. It's not a big deal. You move on. Oh, balls. The paper got in the way. I'm just gonna... I don't know. Yes. Sven knocks over everything for me. That way I don't feel like I'm missing out. That's exactly what happens. Children are relentless, but at least they grow old enough to break more expensive things. I don't know. <laughs> My son's only like five right now. Anyway. Ta-da! There's your two pages. Look at that. Yeah, he'll be six eventually.
I'm just gonna like hold my hands here for a second so that way I have a thumbnail picture. <laughs> okay, uh, let me label this. just under two hours this time but I have done this homework like three times before so that might have something to do with it and I also draw pretty regularly or at least I try to yeah um, so this is page one this is page two circles are stupid <laughs> 